Well, I certainly wasn't expecting the response I got from the previous video. Uh, welcome all the new subscribers and people watching my channel for the first time. Appreciate your support and I appreciate the constructive comments that were in the previous video. But I thought I'll do this follow-up video. I'll explain why I did things a certain way because believe it or not, there was planning and thought put into this. And I'm gonna address probably the biggest concern people had, which was that the wires on the output side were too large. So we're gonna use 16 gauge wires on the output and input sides of the connector. So it'll be the same across both sides. And we're gonna see what sort of results we get. So let's see what happens in this video. Now, one of the biggest things it just keeps coming up in the comments is about my wiring gauge saying it's way overkill and look looking at it from on a camera I agree to a point but you need to keep in mind I built this setup to go far beyond this connector's capabilities and these wires and connectors are not rated for 1600 watts what we're doing to this is just absolute craziness and it was never meant to do that so I had to build the rest of the setup to accommodate that overhead and a little bit more so these wires on on the power supply side, they're 12 gauge. They are rated to 25 amps per wire. I have three wires uh, per power supply, so that's 75 amps. The power supplies are rated for 62 amps. So you've got the power supply, what it's capable of putting out, plus a little bit of safety overhead. That is how, I mean, it looks nuts, but it's actually very sensible for the amount of current these power supplies can potentially put out. Now, in regards to the loads, we have eight gauge wiring going to each of them. This is, uh, so eight gauge is rated for 50 amps. These loads are rated for 40 amps. So we have a little bit of safety margin on those wires also. There's only one wire going to each of them, which is why it is eight gauge instead of 12 gauge. I am just doing this by the book and what the wire is officially rated for because I want to minimize voltage drop and heating outside of the area that I am actually testing. Now, obviously the connector came up as well. So in regards to the, this directly wired version, we have uh, 12 gauge wires going to it. And the reason I chose 12 gauge and there was some thought put into this, believe it or not, is because the wires fit between two pins each. And what happens is when you solder the wire between the pins, it stabilizes the pins against each other and stops them from rotating and moving around. This connector is not very stable when it is not mounted in a PCB. And this wire fitted nicely between uh, each two pins. And when I compared it, you know, like 16 gauge versus 12 gauge, so we got 12 uh, 16 gauge down to 6 12 gauge. The overall conductor size was pretty similar. We are going to see a difference. I mean, there is a little bit more metal and wire here, but it's not like orders of magnitude more capacity than what the 16 gauge did. So I chose this for my own sanity to be fair on the connector so the pins are aligned properly. And that's how this was born but I did see issues with it absorbing all the heat in the beginning, which again, what I said in the first video is why I did this PCB. And yes, there's a ton of wires hanging off this, but the wires weren't the point of this. It was the PCB itself. And everyone's looking at this saying, this is way overkill. Believe it or not, I actually put some calculations into these traces and these are quite undersized for the amount of current that was going through the connector. If you look at the thermal video, the PCB is actually heating up before the connector does. And what's contributing to all the heating is hard to say, which is what I was trying to avoid in the first place, which was to see the heat coming out of the connector alone and not having other things contribute to just messing up the readings. This is just a hobby PCB. It is a one ounce copper layer. I did a very, very light sheen of, of solder over the top of it. And that's pretty much all I did. But if you go and do the math on PCB traces with minimal temperature rise, you will find that this is vastly undersized for the amount of current we were putting through that connector. Now, the bus bars, I agree that they look ridiculous, but there was sanity behind the decision to use these. I needed to be able to remove damaged wires and connectors and be able to replace them easily. So these bus bars stand in and sort of represent 
where things shouldn't fail and anything inside is welcome to fail without damaging anything because these bus bars are solid brass. They're not going to melt. They're not going to be damaged if a wire catches fire or anything like that. Uh, they do absorb a little bit of heat, but you got to remember it's got to travel down this entire wire and get into this bus bar and it dissipates a lot of heat in this wire uh, before it gets to the bus bar. But I am going to make changes in the future versions and there'll be longer wire length here and I'm going to do something with the bus bar arrangement also that will isolate them a little bit more but you'll see that in the next video. The fans here everyone's saying that it's cooling down the connector look there is a tiny bit of airflow but it is nothing dramatic it's an open bench the fans are just pulling air in from wherever they can get it and at the same time these loads are dumping over a kilowatt of heat against this back wall and it's bouncing and spilling back around into this area. You don't really see it in the video, but there's a lot of heat in this area and it's summer where I am at the moment and I've been dealing with a lot of hot days on top of all the heat coming out of the, the loads. So this is not a very friendly environment for this connector. It is actually quite hot. And in a computer case, in a PC, you are gonna have a lot of active airflow over this connector also, in my opinion. Now, one of the other critiques that kept coming up also was that the vice was sucking up all the heat from the PCB and the connector. And I just want to show everyone that this vice was just there to hold it. It wasn't really doing anything meaningful. You can see it's just holding onto the edges of the PCB. The connector doesn't really do that much either, but I will add in some insulators for this video just to rule that out and to keep people happy. And everyone, I just need to say it that everyone seemed to think I'm an NVIDIA shill or something crazy. You really think I'd be filming in a garage if I was an NVIDIA shill? I mean, I don't even have a leather jacket, come on. And everyone needs to keep in mind also, hindsight is a beach. You've watched the video, you've seen the results. When I started all this, I didn't know what was gonna happen. I was absolutely dumbfounded when I saw this connector taking well over a thousand watts and not failing. Like I was quite sure that it was going to fail purely from just abusing the hell out of it. And like I said, I like to be surprised, but just keep in mind with the videos, I don't know what's gonna happen from video to video. I am exploring this with you and sharing my results as I go. I will make mistakes. I will try to fix those mistakes and make improvements to this whole setup as you will see in upcoming videos also. It is all a learning experience and you have to be willing to make mistakes if you wanna get anywhere with this stuff. You can't be perfect first time out. So let's see what happens with this connector and get started. Right, so I've got everything set up, same as last time. The only difference I've done is I've warmed the connector up for 20 minutes solid this time. So the room is hotter, the connector is hotter. This is a sustained 600 watt load, which I don't even think is reflective of what a graphics card actually does in the real world. So yeah, we're gonna go through this, but the room is a lot hotter. It's summer where I am at the moment. It's about 29 degrees in, in here, very hot, so you know, the cards are stacked against this connector also. But let's see what see what happens. We're gonna go up to 700 watts and five minute dwell time, same as last time. Also keep in mind, I am still using the original female side uh, Be Quiet connector. I haven't replaced that yet because I'm saving as many of them as I can for upcoming videos. We have replaced the male side though. That is a brand new connector. All right, increasing to 800 watts. Oh, it's really hot in here. All right, um, we're going up to 900 watts. Room temperature is now passing 30 degrees. Keep in mind, this heat has to go somewhere. So it's just gonna keep getting worse. We're going up to a thousand watts now. Thousand watts, nothing to speak of yet. So we're gonna to increase to 1100. Sorry, I forgot to press record. Uh, I've increased it to 1200 watts now. Okay, so the temperatures are really getting up there, 149 degrees at 1200 watts. I'm gonna go up one more to 1300. And we'll see where we're at. I'm a little bit worried the wires are gonna desolder again because I'm only I'm using leaded solder at the moment. 170 degrees on the wires. Wow, okay, we're getting up there now. All right, I'm gonna stop it there. We're going to just see if any melting has occurred 
and then we'll reevaluate where we go from here. Well, after 1300 watts, I am not seeing any damage really with the 16 gauge wires. Everything looks pretty good. Yep, I don't think there's any damage. And this is the original connector I've been torturing for since the beginning of this. I haven't even replaced this yet. Absolutely wild. So what I've decided to do is to stay at 1300 watts and keep the temperature high, but not hot enough that it's going to desolder the connector and end the testing completely. We'll just keep loading it at 1300 watts. So what I've already done is I ran this connector for an hour and a half at 165 to 170 degrees at 1300 watts. And we may be starting to see some signs of failure. There is like a little white mark on the base of one of the pins. Nothing crazy, but it is there and I haven't noticed it before. The clip has also broken off from the heat. The plastic's just getting brittle, I think. Um, no damage on the male side. Everything looks fine there. So I think, look, we're just going to go for another hour and it's going to get up to about 160, 170 degrees again because the room's cooled down a bit. We'll just keep going until something happens. That's probably going to be the best bet. So, yeah. So I just finished another 90 minute run. Uh, the pins look pretty similar. The white sort of stress marks or staining, I'm not sure what it is, might be increasing a little bit. There is some residue on the side here also, which is probably plasticizer leaching out of the pins or something. But overall, it still looks pretty much fine. It is definitely heat stressed, of course. Interesting thing, the temperature has increased across the hotspot. It's up to about 180 degrees now, and nothing's really changed, and the room temperature is actually about three or four degrees cooler than it was yesterday, because this is the following day, which makes me think that the contact resistance on this socket is starting to fail. And I don't know, I feel like we might be starting to see the downward spiral of this connector. So we're just gonna keep going. I'll do another 90 minutes at say 180 degrees and we'll just keep tracking things. I can't really get scientific at this point by tracking everything really closely because leading up to this point, this isn't a new connector. It's already been abused a lot and I don't think there's much value to be gained there. We just have to keep an eye on this and check the voltage drop very closely. And the voltage drop is getting very, very significant. It's down to about 11.56 volts according to the output bus bar, which is a lot compared to the input. So let's just keep going, see if we get anything else out of this. Alrighty, now we're seeing something. That uh, pin that was playing up earlier is doing its thing again. We can see there's no heat on that pin as soon as I applied the load. So those other pins are doing a lot of work compared to that one at the moment. Now I've decided to start filming because something is happening. I'm seeing smoke. The temperature is increasing. I've checked the current across all the wires. It is a little bit different, but the temperature for some unknown reason just keeps increasing. And I think we might be starting to see a failure. Now, I was just checking the multimeters. So that's the voltage drop, 11.99 volts on the input, 11.57 volts on the output. There is definitely smoke, and I don't know if it's desoldering the connector again, or if um, something else is failing, but the temperature is starting to drop again now. So what I was doing is I was measuring the current across all the wires, and I had had to sort of manipulate them a little bit to be able to take those measurements. Yeah, touching these wires. Oh, hello. No, the wires are definitely melting. Try and get you in here in real time. You can see that. All right, I'm just checking the current across all the wires. 15, 23, 21, 13, 20, 19. All right, 
Definitely seeing some wild stuff. I don't know how I'm gonna make sense of all this video later. All right, let's do another checkup. 16 amps, 25.8. That wire is doing a lot of work. 24, ugh, what is that? That's not a good reading. 12, oof, 20, 21. So one of these wires is not pulling its weight. Oh, hello, 13, 14. Temperatures are up to 195, 197. I think the voltage drop is increasing. We've got 11.54 volts on the output bus bar now, and the loads are reporting very low voltage also. Just to be clear, that voltage drop is to do with the resistance through this entire connector setup. So we are measuring the voltage from here to here. Ooh, what just happened? Something moved. One of the pins just came off. So now there's probably no current flow across that. No, there's nothing. All right, I'm gonna stop it. We're gonna cool down and we'll have a look at uh, what happened. All right, I really hate to leave people hanging, but I'm actually gonna stop the video here because I feel like we might have something with this connector where we're gonna be able to see something happen in real time. And I wanna revamp a few areas of this setup so we can get more data and maybe we can collect some useful information out of this connector in the future once we've uh, worked out uh, a few little things. As it stands, I'm really not happy with this current clamp. The readings I'm getting out of it, I just don't trust it. And I have some ideas about how we can change a lot of things in this setup to really improve this. So we're definitely gonna do that. But anyway, what did we learn from this video? Well, we learned that the wires melt around 190 degrees on this particular brand connector anyway. So we can keep that in mind going into the future and we know when we're gonna start seeing things happen before it happens. Uh, it's also worth noting that, you know, this connector has sustained a lot of testing, everything up to this point, including what I've done off camera. And in this last sort of stint, we've gone from 165 up to about 195 degrees over a four hour period at 1300 watts. And that's not to be understated. It is a massive amount of load for this connector to withstand. Some other things I've learned, I need to change to lead-free solder. Lead-free solder has a, a higher melting point and I've been using leaded solder up to this point. In a hobby environment, you only really need leaded solder. I've never had a situation where I've had things hot enough to actually melt the solder. Now, I don't know exactly what's happened. Um, the pins seem to still be attached to this connector, but something has happened. And I don't know if the pin reconnected itself as it was cooling down or if something happened, but yeah, that's something we need to work on. The connector still hasn't melted, it's intact. All the pins look pretty much the same as they did before. I mean, obviously the connector's worse for wear, but the wires have been melting and the connector is still intact, which is a very interesting thing in itself. So maybe there's something in there that we need to explore a little bit more. Uh, I also feel that these 16 gauge wires are probably a reasonable stand-in instead of using a PCB if we need to, because uh, the wire temps on the female side are the hottest we've ever seen. And I don't know if it's because the connector's failing or if it's because of this current setup, but you know, we've never been able to get wire temps on this side up this hot before. So that is really good to know for the future. Now, in regards to what is happening to the connector, I'm not exactly sure. I can only attribute it to the contact resistance increasing and uneven loading across the wires, which has been talked about a lot on other channels. And it's creating a lot of local heating in certain spots of the connector. There's no other reason for it. The room temperature has been lower than it was at the beginning when it was at its lowest temperatures around 170 degrees and for it to go up 25 degrees out of nowhere, something dramatic has to be happening with the same amount of load on the connector. So yeah, there's a lot to do. I've got to do a bit of work on this connector. I've got to revamp a few things. We'll come back with another video. We're gonna test another aspect of this connector's durability and then we'll circle back to this once I feel like we've got enough information to really go head on into this. Until then, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I answered most of your questions and I will be back with another video soon.